So let's look at uh, ISOMAP, which is short for isolinear mapping, and uh, we'll see how it's used for nonlinear manifold learning. First, uh, background of uh, ISOMAP. We've already seen an example of a geodesic uh, in the context of uh, um, uh, uh, differential geometry. And so this uh, is a geodesic uh, uh, connecting x1 to y here. And the geodesic is uh, pi. It's the shortest curve connecting uh, the two points, x1 to y. And the length of the geodesic is defined in this manner. And this derivative of phi of t is the vector v1 at any point, you have to plug in the value of t, and uh, phi of t gets you the point x1. It's a point, phi of t is a mapping from the real line to a point in the manifold. And its derivative gives you a tangential vector at that point. And this geodesic length can be approximated as a summation like this, or like this. So this geodesic length from x1 to y can be approximated as uh, the length of the vectors uh, summed over all uh, uh, small piecewise linear uh, segments. So this is what it looks like. Now for short distances, when two points are very close together, then we can take the direct Euclidean distance to be equal to the geodesic distance. For instance, that between x1 and x2, because an x1 and x2 are very closely spaced. Uh, likewise, x2 and x3 are very closely spaced. So we can approximate the geodesic distance between x1 and x2 and between x2 and x3 as the Euclidean distance like this. But when considering longer distances like between x1 and y, we have to approximate the geodesic distance as this summation. So we have to sum this length plus this length plus this length all the way up to this length. And the summation of all these uh, lengths of the segment is a better approximation of the geodesic uh, length, length of the geodesic, which is LP x comma y. And this is the philosophy behind isomap. So isomap does the following. If y is a neighbor of x, then the direct edge between x and y is uh, taken to be the distance. So L phi of x comma y in that case is approximated as the Euclidean distance x minus y, uh, which is in a graph, as we will see, the weight of the edge between x and y. So small distances are associated with edges between uh, uh, two different points, x and y, in isomap. And when y is not a neighbor of x, then no edge exists between x and y. And then, in order to compute the shortest path between the two points, we have to use this piecewise linear approximation. So the shortest paths then are computed using Dijkstra's or Floyd's algorithms. Here's a reference. This is the original paper in which uh, isomap was proposed. Tannenbaum uh, et al., a global geometric framework for nonlinear dimensionality reduction, Science, Volume 290, on December 22nd, 2000. Now, this is what isomap does. When we 
consider really small distances, then like between any two points like this, then we assume that they're connected together and the weight between those two points serves as a measure of the distance between those two points. But for points like this, and from here to here, how do we approximate the geodesic distance? We take the shortest path from this point to this point using Dijkstra's algorithm or uh, Floyd's algorithm, as this figure here shows in the left, uh, excuse me, uh, right. So short distances are assumed to be the edge uh, weights, but long distances, we have to take the shortest path distance using Dijkstra's or Floyd's algorithms. And that's basically what isomap does to find all the distances between, pairwise distances between all these points. Now here's a weighted graph. And uh, you can see that, uh, well, this is a really small graph, but uh, uh, points that are close by are connected together. And this is, uh, the weight between them is a measure of how close they are. So the distance between A and B is 1.5. Now what's the distance between A and K? There you have to share, uh, uh, take the shortest path. It's probably 1 1.5, 1 1.5, 1 1.2, 1 1.5, 0 0.08. Either that or 1 1.5, 1 1.5, 1 1.8, 1 1.6, whichever turns out to be the shortest. That's the uh, a geodesic length between uh, the points A and K. Now, uh, focus your attention on this. So the weight between B and G is 4.0 in this graph. This is a general graph, not necessarily a manifold. And the distance uh, between A and G and B and A added together is 3.3. So WBG, which is 4.0, this one is more than this plus this. Now this is okay in a graph. In any graph, this is quite possible, but we shall not be dealing with uh, these situations in uh, Euclidean manifolds because for us, triangle inequality needs to hold so the distance between B and G can never exceed 1.5 plus 1.8. It always has to be less than 3.3. Now let's uh, look at the uh, isomap algorithm. It's quite simple, really. We have already seen MDS. What does MDS do? It takes pairwise distances, pairwise square distances really, between all pairs of points, and then it uh, extracts uh, low dimensional coordinates of uh, those points. So isomap is based on MDS. The, at the core of isomap is MDS. So this is why let's uh, just remind ourselves of the steps that MDS takes to do dimension reduction. So what we begin with in MDS is D, which is the matrix of square distances. That's given. And then the first step it does is find the centered Gram matrix G from D. And this is how it does it. So from the square distance matrix D, using this transformation, and you can refer back to your notes for uh, H. By this simple transformation, you get the centered Gram matrix. And then one does a spectral decomposition of this centered Gram matrix. And this is the spectral decomposition. Whence we get the data matrix X. And we can get rid of 
uh, uh, the smaller uh, uh, eigenvalues of uh, the decomposed uh, gram matrix. We can only retain as many of the highest eigenvalues as the number of dimensions that we want our x to be and discard the rest of the eigenvalues. And so that gives us the data matrix X. So this is MDS. And isomap, once we get the distance matrix, we can apply MDS to get the data points. Okay, so here are the steps of isomap. The input X is high dimensional, but we assume that it's embedded within a sub-manifold of this high dimensional space. That's the whole philosophy behind, uh, whole assumption rather behind uh, isomap. And so we construct the weighted graph. Find nearest neighbors of each sample Xi. So Xi is a sample so we assume, if you remember, I told you uh, in a previous slide that there are edges between a sample to its nearest neighbor. So we have to identify the nearest neighbor of each sample. And there are two ways to do that. One is the kth nearest neighbor. So here the cardinality of the set of nearest neighbors, Ni, is k always. So every xi is connected to exactly k other points. Otherwise, we can uh, use a fixed radius, define a radius r, and connect our given sample xi to every point xj in the data uh, such that xi and xj, the distance between them is less than equal to this radius r. So these are the two methods. And then we join the nearest neighbors via weighted edges and the weights will be simply these Euclidean distances or Euclidean distances square. It's your choice. So now at this point, we have a graph and we have weighted edges in the graph. At this point, you should note that the nearest neighbors or the fixed radius care should be taken to ensure that the graph is fully connected. In other words, there should be at least one path from every sample to every other sample. Otherwise, uh, what will turn out to be, uh, the distance will turn out to be infinity and then it'll uh, result in two disjoint uh, uh, manifolds. So that's not what we want. We need to ensure at this point that there exists a path from every sample point to every other sample point. Maybe not a direct edge, but a set of edges, a path. It could be a long path, but we need to ensure that. In other words, we need to ensure that the graph that we just constructed up out of our samples is fully connected. So Wij is uh, the weight between sample points i and j, and that's this Euclidean distance, or it could be the Euclidean distance squared. And here j belongs to uh, n of i. i and j have to be neighbors. And then we obtain the square distance matrix. That's step two. We use Dijkstra's or Freud algorithms to fill out the rest of the uh, distances. And then we apply the MDS algorithm to get the low dimensional X. So we start with high dimensional X, then we construct our graph, joining nearest neighbors together via weights. Then we apply Dijkstra's or Floyd's algorithm to complete the distance matrix. And then once the distance matrix is complete, we can safely apply MDS to get our low dimensional x. Here is isomap uh, uh, that reduces all these uh, faces to two dimensions. Uh, the Euclidean distance between similar faces are taken and then 
uh, the shortest path algorithm is applied uh, the Floyd or that's what they will give you identical results. And uh, then two dimensional embedding is shown here. And uh, you can see it uh, makes sense. So these are different uh, lighting directions. That's along the X axis. As you go along the X axis, you get changes in the lighting direction. And as you go along the Y axis, you get changes in the up down pose. Here, the camera is above the uh, head in uh, all of these. But here, the camera is uh, clo close to the jaw. It's the camera is uh, focused upwards towards the head. So you can see that it all makes sense in two dimensions. Okay, so here's a comparison between also map and LLE, which we we'll learn uh, later. Now, ISOMAP is a global algorithm. So what's shown here is, so this is, this square here is the distance matrix. For nearest neighbors, you see this, uh, what's shaded in dark is uh, the edge weight. So the dark shaded region is filled up with direct edge weights. And for edges that are further away, here and here, that's lightly shaded, we use uh, the shortest path distance to fill up those values. This is a global method. We use the entire D matrix. As opposed to that, we have LLE, which we shall uh, learn later. Uh, LLE is strictly local. It does not use distances between two points that are very far away. It strictly uses only uh, uh, distances between points that are close together. It doesn't have any need for the uh, longer edges, uh, uh, longer paths with, uh, which are not directly connected by edges in the graph. So isomap, it has proven asymptotic convergence. We shall not go to the proof, but it's there. The distance between all pair of points are required. So it's order n cubed complexity, where n is the number of uh, samples. Now, because of this complexity, people have, uh, it, it, that's why it's a global method and it requires uh, more computation. Because of this complexity, uh, people have proposed landmark isomap, which is an improvement. What it does, it takes a small subset of uh, points uh, to estimate uh, geodesic distances, and then it makes use of some other uh, nice strong approximation, blah, 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 to uh, find um, all uh, pairs of distances and so on, and uh, before it uses MDS. But we shall not worry about what landmark isomap does. Just need to know that there exists such a uh, algorithm which greatly simplifies the computation in isomap. Now, isomap is not very effective in the presence of non-convexities, i.e. holes in the manifold, and this figure will show you why. So this figure is again taken from the same paper. So this is filled with holes. These are all holes. And the geodesic distance now is approximated like this. When we take uh, uh, the uh, uh, shortest path distance, we have to avoid the holes because the holes are not connected. There are no edges in the holes. And so it turns out to be longer than the actual geodesic distance between those points. So that's when ISOMAP doesn't do such a good job. The end.